Evening, guys. How's Good it? evening. Eh? <laughs> Hope you guys are all doing well in internet land tonight. This is our 14th week of lockdown live chats. And on top of that, we have just entered the month of Rocktober. So, yeah, yeah. we're kicking it in yeah. big today. Uh, as usual, I'm joined with my awesome co host, Mr. Alec Larson. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, it's good, man. And this is a bit of like a, a weird situation for me. I, I I don't know a lot of other Alex, so it's it's cool to be able to chat to my namesake. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Well, good to hear. Well, yeah, I guess so. Uh, with that, we could actually introduce our awesome guests. We kick in Rocktober big, and we have our industrial own metal blasters from Joey's. We have Chaos Doctrine, we got Dr. D, Dan Berger in the house, and we got Mr. Alex Surridge. <laughs> How's it going, yeah. guys? Greetings. Yeah. Hey, man. Thanks for having us. Good, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, again, yeah, like, uh, like Mr. Larson, as she pointed out earlier, um, it's been a really weird, confusing time during this whole lockdown. I think the last time... Uh, Alec, that I saw you was um, at Summit Fest with uh, the drift before yeah. everything went to <laughs> hell and gone. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I guess kind of breaking the ice, it's always good to kind of find out how the bands are doing. So, yeah, how has things been in the Chaos Doctrine camp uh, this lockdown? D, you want to start uh, that one? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's been it's been weird. Um, obviously, when we had when we had proper lockdown, we didn't see each other at all. But work kept going on happening. Alec was doing a lot of work. I was doing a lot of work. Phil was doing a lot of work. And then when stage one was over, we all got together. Well, the three of us, um, our new drummer Rory. It's also Alex's drummer. Other uh, Rory plays for both Alex. So uh, you know he's <laughs> a drummer. So we haven't seen him since February. So um, we continued with our album with our previous drummer Ralph's uh, tracks. Um, and every time our album is done, um, Mr. Surridge here goes, hey guys, I discovered this new awesome way of doing shit. And then we start all over. So the album was done in February, but now we're on version 266. And um, it, sh it should be done soon. <laughs> but we're, it's going well for us uh, production-wise. We played a show last week. We've got two lined up um, at the end of October. So um, yeah, Chaos Doctrine World is uh, still very much alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, let's actually get into the meat and potatoes for the peeps that actually might not know about you guys. Kind of break it down and maybe maybe Mr. Surridge can answer this. Tell, tell us about the genesis of Chaos Doctrine. And obviously in a, in a country where like thrash metal and brutal death and melodic death tends to be the meat and potatoes, industrial metal tends to be a little bit of an intense one. I mean, we have the Terminatrix maybe in misery a bit of Batre Necha, but what was the choice of going that route, industrial metal? Okay, well, uh, uh, this one is normally what uh, where, where Dr. D excels, but um, you know, in, <laughs> in, in my case, um, having played in a lot of metal bands uh, or, and so forth over the last couple of years, um, I wasn't quite prepared to 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 be in an industrial metal band. I don't think it was something that I, I actually, um, you know, felt I was comfortable with. And uh, so in 2013, when I joined, it was sort of like, okay, this is interesting. Yeah, can can do it. Um, and uh, but um, I think what we've done since 2013 is uh, is taken it up a notch. I think from production, from you know whether that be the music, whether that be the the look of the band, you know what we look like on stage, uh, what we what we our visuals, what we show on stage, uh, everything has just gone you know so much higher. I think um, you know if you actually look at the videos that we that our, our main man Phil produces. Um, it's just fantastic stuff. Uh, I'm really proud of those things. And, um, you know, so with that, uh, obviously we, we brought out a, our previous album about a year and a half, two years ago. Um, and as 
okay or good as, as what we thought that was. Uh, I think this one is just taking it up an, uh, another notch completely. Um, I've, I've uh, been given the, 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 the trust of the guys to, to handle the production. And like Daniel says, um, you know, I'd, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely still learning, but I'm, I'm learning at such a rapid rate at, these, at, these, at this stage because of, you know, the other bands that I'm working with and so on and, you know, my own studies that, yeah, we, we, we're looking to, to kick this one really hard. Yeah, so if that answers your question, I hope so. Sick. No, it definitely does. <laughs> important is we're, we're metal first and industrial second. So um, as much as I love, I mean, I, I love, I listen to industrial more than anyone else in the band. And um, I went through an agro tech phase with Combi Christ and Tactical Sect and, and like proper fucking hard techno bands. But we're still metal first. So 95% of our songs gets written like a metal song. And then we layer it with, with percussion, with uh, voice loops, with keyboards, with whatever we want to do. But even if you strip all that shit out, there's still a fucking metal song under there. So we take the whole metal side of it very seriously. Um, when Alec joined in 2013, he just brought a really angry, heavy edge because Alec likes very technical metal and he likes like really, really angry stuff. And his, his playing is a lot angrier than our previous guitarist was. Our previous guitarist was a huge Megadeth fan, which is cool. Um, but Megadeth plays a lot of very kind of clean, you know, Megadeth has a very clean, listenable sound compared to Shaga and bands like that, that that Alec has been listening to his whole life. So uh, he really, he, he brought the metal side of the industrial metal a lot more. And the heavier the metal gets, the easier it is to, to layer industrial. Because we really just use it to, um, you know, to put touches on and to make the song full and complete and make it sound like Chaos Doctrine. Sick. Um, you guys touched on the fact that you, you recently got a, a relatively new drummer from um, Rory from Forsaken Fate. Um, now, I know it's kind of weird jamming when you live on the opposite in side of the country to someone. Um, Daniel, maybe you can talk us through like choosing him and also like how you guys have that like working relationship. I mean, obviously with lockdown, it's like a little different, but like before, before that happened. Well, um, a pretty much <clears throat> Just a quick backstory. So um, two of our founding members, Ralph and Ray, decided to leave the band mid last year for Ralph. Ralph moved out of the province and Ray's got some other like business stuff he needed to take care of. So me and, and me and Alec and Phil were like, fuck this, we're not stopping. So we built Gemini AD Studios. And then um, we wanted to finish the album actually before even thinking about a drummer. And um, Devo, Dave Westays, and we love that guy. Um, he started talking to us and he's like, this is Oak Rory, really digs your shit. Uh, meet him, you know, check if he wants to jam with you. And he came through on Saturday and we were all like, oh man, just getting a drummer in another province is going to be such a pain in the ass. But Rory and, and Alec Lawson, you'll know this. Rory's got this fucking burning passion for metal inside him that it's probably more than the three of us put together. And he just, he's got more energy than a Jack Russell. And uh, just, he learned our songs before he got you. And the first time we jammed was like the 10th time we jammed. It never felt like we have to teach him the songs. And he, he just brings, he, I mean, you know, Rory worships Slayer and like the old school thrash. And he brings that really angry thrash metal drumming underneath our stuff, which is already pretty heavy. So he, he adds a, a little edge to it, which is really, really nice. In terms of how we're making it work, Right now, it's really difficult. In the beginning, it was pretty cool. He comes through every second week. And like I said, he knows the song. So it's just practice. It's not us teaching him stuff. And because we've got our own studio, I mean, we record stuff, we send it to him, and, um, and he learns it. But uh, yeah, obviously, since lockdown, it's been hard. Flights are expensive. Flights are scarce. So we're figuring it out. We'll see him again soon. And uh, in the meantime, the three of us are playing with our trusty drum machine called um, iMac. Uh, and uh, we're having a we're having a good time. The three of us just doing we call it chaos doctrine light, 
we just rock up, plug in the laptop, jam, I shout into a microphone, we have a whiskey and we go home. Um, so the full game doctrine will be back on the circuit again soon. But in the meantime, the three of us are just having a shitload of fun doing it the easy way. Because if you've seen us, our, our show is intense and it's a lot of work. So we're enjoying this like light, just pitch up, plug in and play kind of as opposed to logging around screens and drums, this and this and that, you know. But I mean, Rory is great. We wish he would move here, but uh, until then, we'll, we'll just figure it out. Sick. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, I guess it kind of works pretty well with uh, with what we wanted to actually talk about because we wanted to start to delve a little bit into the into the new album. But I wanted to actually, before we touched on to the actual production side, um, I was wondering if Dr. D, if you can maybe give a little bit of an elaboration because obviously over the years, the, the the ideas and the production has changed a lot and the new album is definitely a lot more denser but the lyricism is the one thing that stood out more to me because it offers a little bit more of a an introspective somber apocalyptic feel um i'm kind of wondering because obviously all these releases come at critical points in humanity's life it when it comes to writing lyrics do you take a lot of thought and a lot of influence from your surroundings into concocting what becomes the vocal spewings that you bring out oh fuck i was on mute sorry so yes and no for me i mean i've been into metal a long time and i've been into like philosophy and all kinds of stuff in my youth so there's still a lot of words flying around in my head when when i hear a riff the first time i almost you can you can ask alec it takes me like five minutes of listening to riffs and i go you know what we're calling this song this and this is what it's going to be about and it's always been like that um my lyrical themes haven't changed a lot father gregory is is new it's the first biographical account we've done but when you listen to our tracks on our old album and the and the new tracks coming um, there's always a dark theme. This is fucking metal. You know, this is not the Beach Boys. So there's always a dark theme. There's a lot of war. There's a lot of dark. There's a lot of fucking human condition and everything's fucked up. Um, we don't really dabble in Satan because, you know, it's been done to shit. But there's still that kind of, you know, I, I'm, I'm obsessed with Slayer. So there's still that kind of always a dark edge. Um, I think Grigori came out really nicely because I've been wanting... I actually saw a Facebook memory today from 2009. In 2009, today I bought um, that. My, I've got a typo negative T-shirt with 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 um, with Rasputin on. But years before that, I've wanted a song called Father Grigori that's about Rasputin. And when when Alec chugged this that fucking verse riff the first time, I was like, dudes, I've got the coolest idea for this song. And uh, yeah, we've got really cool stuff coming on that track, which we can talk about a bit later. But some of the newer tracks, we played them live. Blood Serpent God is out there already. The writer's out there. Dark themes, very metal, but it's just a shitload of fun to play, you know? Which I take my lyrics video. Very well. Every song tells a story, you know? Yeah, the, the music video for Father Gregory was next level. That was like, that's, that's why, the, I, that, that, when you say that you guys are metal first, industrial second, right there, just looking at the dark, themology and the like the esoteric nature was yeah metal <laughs> you know but anyway you know yes Rasputin's been one of the most metal people in the history of mankind dude I I struggle to find very many more examples of somebody who lived the abandon and chaos that metal kind of puts out there in our roofs and in our double kick and you know, he was he was the real fucking deal, you know. So I've always wanted to write a track about him. And I'm really glad Alec came up with the song because I think um, the lyrical themes, the way the riffs sit together and, and the way we did the loops, all of that shit just makes a really killer track. I love that song. Sick. You guys... Um collaborated with uh, Urban Swart and Black Light Council on a track called Lies. And obviously that sort of went pretty well because you've since done a collaboration with them called the Chaos Council Domination. Yeah. Now, I know that um, 
Urban usually handles his own like mixing and mastering and Alec, obviously you do your, your guys mixing and mastering. Oh. So I was wondering if Alec, you could take me through that sort of process. Like how was it working um, with Urban and who handled the majority of the mixing and mastering or was it a collaborative process? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, uh, Urban, uh, Urban is definitely, uh, he, he's got some very concrete ideas about how he likes to do things. Um, so I'll talk, you know, on, on what, what we've done up until now, he handled all of that, um, you know, in terms of mix and master and so forth there. And, you know, kudos to him. Um, but I can tell you that on the new album, uh, the new BLC, uh, he has asked me to take care of that. So, um, because he's heard some of the newer stuff that I've been, I have been doing. And um, I think it will give him a break from trying to write a lot of the music, produce it, put it together, mix it, master. I think he's, you know, it, sometimes you just get a little bit too close to a project that you don't actually see all the, 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 the finer things that you could, you could actually fix and, and or make. Right, so um, I'm, I'm very honored to, to, to be working on that. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, I play, you know, he, he does a lot of the guitar work on there. So I do a lot of the solo work on there, which is great because it actually then takes me out of that process. And I can concentrate more on, on the production and, and what it's gonna actually sound like, you know, in the end, which, uh, you know, it's, it's I, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 40, 45 years old. I, I'm, I'm used to uh, sort of taking myself out of uh, the space and being able to hear, see the whole picture. Um, you know, when you're uh, young, I think that you, you, you constantly focus on two, on the small stuff. And, um, you know, in, I've just been, I think I've been able to find ways to, step back, have a look at the whole thing, and then go, okay, cool, this is how we're going to handle that. I mean, uh, D will tell you as well. I mean, you know, if he, if he wants changes in a, in a mix or something like that, I don't have an issue with it. But I do also say to him, like, okay, but, you know, let's not put vocals louder. Let's try and maybe pull something out so that it actually gives space for vocals or something like that. You know, you really... There's, you got to split your head up, uh, you know, when it comes to, to mixing and, and producing an album compared to just actually playing and, and trying to do everything yourself. And I think, you know, I think uh, with, with Urban, it's going to be one of those cases where he actually gets to write, you know, uh, really killer tracks and I can enhance them uh, with, with, with a better, better mix, you know. I can add two things to that. There's another song we, Alec and I did with Urban back in, fuck dude, before, we did it before we did Domination. And um, he's been messing around with it, but I, Alec, I think there's a WhatsApp in my inbox right now saying, I want Alec to finish that song. <laughs> um, very different to what we've done before. It's, uh, it's like a dad metal song, you know, but it's fucking great, I loved it. It's the first track I ever sang on, like proper fucking glam metal vocals, dude. So. I hope people like it. Um, second thing, Urban is a creative machine. He, he fucking churns out a song in like a minute, dude. So I do think he would benefit a lot from working with Alec. Alec is, I find him incredibly easy and mature to work with. Like he said, like Alec will tell me the vocals are too soft. I'm going to push it up. Where, when, you know, if you've worked with guitarists before, they're always the oaks chugging the guitar up. I've never had to tell Alec to turn his guitar down. He, he listens. And if he doesn't agree, he poses a, an, an intelligent and well thought through counter argument. And, and Phil and Alec and I have had such a great working relationship like that. So if you ever think about working with an engineer, work with fucking Alex Surridge because he will give you everything you thought you want, but better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean... I couldn't uh, think of a better segue to the next question because obviously lockdown has been pretty productive for you guys in the sense that you created Gemini AD Studios, literally out of nothing from what the videos have shown on YouTube. Yeah. So maybe Dan, maybe you can give us a little bit of a breakdown about, about, you know, Gemini AD and what you guys offer and then, you know, get into the meat and potatoes with that, like, 
Sirich. Yeah, Gemini AD started as a concrete slab that's uh, 60 square meters. And um, Alex, Alex Sirich actually built the fucking place up from nothing. Uh, we got to design it together, me and him, and make it look the way we want. So when you walk in there, like everyone that's walked in there went, holy fuck, look at this place. We got like four, five meter high ceilings. We got a drum riser, two drum kits, mixing station, vocal booth, bar, bry, toilet, 25 Marshall amps. Not really 25, but it looks like it when you walk in there. And it's just, it's an amazing space. We, we, we didn't soundproof it, but we sound treated it. So my neighbors are still a bit pissy with me every now and then. But dude, the acoustics in there are just, it's fantastic. It doesn't matter. We had Zebra in there not too long ago. And as you'll know, Zebra is not metal at all. And those guys sounded fantastic. The drift practices here and um, obviously Chaos Doctrine practices in it. So the, the sound in there is just magnificent. When I get on stage now, I'm like, holy crap, this, this is so shit. I miss my <laughs> studio, you know? So um, we are planning to do one or two very small events here at some stage when it comes to album launch time. Um, we, do, we do offer rehearsal space and we do offer recording space, but it's very limited. Obviously, we built this space for us. It's not a commercial space, but if it's friends of ours, and they want to do something, or if there's a compelling reason to do it, um, you you hire Alec and the studio comes with it, you know? So, uh, yeah, it's a great space. We, we do magnificent shit in there. We've got all the gear we need, and it's just, I love spending time in there. Like, April lockdown, I was in there so many days. I did Domination in there, and this other track of um, of Urbans that, that's coming out. I mean, Domination, I did all the samples and all the vocals. Um, I wrote all the lyrics and um, Alec did the solos at his place. He sent it through. I mixed it up and I sent it through to uh, to Urban and he did the final mixes and mastering. So, but anyway, back to Gemini AD. Yeah, marvelous work. Alec does a lot of work where he's sitting right now, but all his final mixes happen here just because the sound and the acoustics are amazing. And he, like all kudos to Alec. He, he designed the place, he engineered the place. It's fantastic. And it looks really metal. <laughs> So, well, I mean, yeah, I guess uh, I guess we can kind of uh, work with this because we actually had to mention the drift because again, uh, it would like you obviously you guys were literally in the midst of the album coming out. You were just starting to play out the tunes live, and then the whole pandemic shit happened. So we had a just a, just like a little bit. <laughs> like I guess just a little bit of like direct like finding out uh, uh, your thoughts on the tracks that you've enjoyed playing out from the new album. Uh, have there been any standout ones uh, that, that you've enjoyed and that have gotten the reaction that you were hoping for, Alec? Uh, we're talking The Drift now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Um, Funeral Man's a great track for me. Um, I mean, there, there, Sierra is a great track. There, there are a couple of good tracks on there. Um, yeah, it was... Uh, you know, the sort of the final album in, in, in the trio of, of, of albums. So, uh, you know, and also um, I, I was, you know, most of that album was written already before I got there. Um, you know, so it was like, okay, you know, come in, learn the songs. Um, and, uh, you know, because you're going to be recording them in studio very soon. And, um, you know, we used uh, JP at B-Shop Studios for, for that. Um, and, uh, I mean, JP is, you know, just world-renowned. He's, he's been around for forever and he knows what he's doing. Um, he's got a great, great room and everything like that. Um, and it's, but to me, it's still a little bit of the old school way of doing things. Where, um, like... You go there, you record, and you leave, and you know every now and again you go and check on a mix and so on and so on. Um, you know, whereas uh, I've very much become a lot more hands-on, uh, and I like to, you know, make sure that things sound good. I mean, um, you know, it's you know some guys can can let go, um, and I, I I just think that although uh, you know the album doesn't sound bad at all, I, I'm very proud of it. Um, I think if I, if we, if we had been there a little more, it could that extra ten percent could have been there, and um, 
I don't really actually dug it a bit more than I do. But uh, I think having, uh, you know, as you said, with the COVID, yeah, I mean, it just sort of just stopped our whole promotion of that album. You know, bringing it out in December and then March you're in lockdown. I mean, there's no promotion for that album whatsoever. Um, so, yeah, just over these this time, I have actually been uh, writing new new snippets and bits for for the for the next album and uh and likewise the other guys um are doing a bit and uh hopefully soon we'll we'll get back on track and you know sort of promote get back to promoting that album and then also try and release maybe a, a new ep uh just to sort of get the, the the whole vibe going back again you know sick cool <laughs> Um, you guys mentioned Dave Devo a little bit earlier. Um, Daniel, how's it been working with with um, with Dave? Um, and tell me, like, how important to you guys has he has he been in like managing your like social media aspect of the band and like getting you interviews and whatnot? Devo is amazing. Our our uh, relationship with him is slightly different than with other bands. We use him on a sort of a project base. But despite that, I mean, when Devo's not on the payroll, he still works for us. He, he's just a monster. Um, Alec has known him for a long time with, with Alex dealings in, or Alex, be, Alec being a partner and witch doctor. And since then, Devo's a buddy, you know, I just wish he lives closer so we can get drunk together. But um, like I said, he's just amazing. Whether he's on our party, he does great work for us. He is, and I'm starting to feel haven't in months because, we, like I said, we do projects, you know. Um, he, he's great. I would recommend it to any band. Really easy to work with. He's not pushy. He listens to what you want. He gives you what you want. But again, like, like what I said about Alec with mixing, Devo, is, he gives you better than what you wanted. You know, you thought you wanted this thing. But he gives you this thing and it's and then you go, Oh my god, I wish I thought of that, you know. So I would recommend Devo to anybody, whether you're metal or not. He's working with Zebra, he's working with a lot of other guys that's not in the scene. And he gets results, you know, and that we we that that's how we work. Alec and Phil and I, we're we're all older than 40. We've done this for a while. We've got, you know, grown up lives too. So when it comes to the band, we take it seriously. We want to get shit done and it's fun, but we still want to get shit done, you know? So yeah, I recommend them any day. Yeah. We, we've spoken on countless, countless podcasts about, uh, about the use of PR and just being stuck here in Africa, just the need to have somebody that's connected with the international market to get the reach out there, to break through mm -hmm. the clutter, so to speak. But yeah, yeah you, we did actually mention which doctor earlier and you know, to, to some people who may not have known, pulling back the curtain, you were one of the, the figureheads yourself and Sean Peterson. Mm. Shout out to Sean. You guys did this for a long time. You guys brought down probably some of the biggest extreme bands to ever touch SA Shores. Getting a little bit nostalgic, Alec. Any, ba any bands that ever, like, touched your heart, like, on a personal level, like, I'm so happy I got to bring those guys down. No, no, not discrediting any of the bands, but were there any that hit you on a more personal level, like almost yeah, a fanboy, if you will? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, sure. The the fact that uh, that we were able to bring Cannibal Corpse to South Africa is, uh, you know, I mean, it's, maybe they're not everybody's cup of tea, but I, I mean, they they we grew up with them, and to have them here and yeah, to actually see those guys and how humble they are, uh, you know, it's just, yeah, it was just amazing. Um, the, the, my, my second band, although probably favorite band, is Decapitated. Um, and I absolutely love that band. Um, yeah, uh, to have them here was, yeah, goo, you know, goose flesh. Because, uh, you know, I mean, if there, there are a couple of bands I, I would love to bring and, you know, hey, if I ever get back into that side of things, you know, you know, a band like Meshuggah or, you know, someone like that would really be cool, Gojira, et cetera. But, 
you know, I'm, I'm not uh, looking to, to, to put any hopes into anybody's hearts, you know, for that. Uh, I'm just, I'm just very grateful that we got the opportunity to bring some amazing bands out here. And more than anything, the, the South African bands that played at Witchfest, uh, I think it's 2014, they destroyed. I mean, the, I have to say that there were some South African bands there that, uh, you know, if I could have taken some of the internationals off, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I was just like, eh, you know, the the South African bands just destroy, and I, and that's the one thing that I do know about South African bands because I've toured, you know, internationally, and I've toured with international bands in South Africa. We've got nothing to hold back for, you know, and that is why I wish there were more devos out there who had international contacts who could find ways to get South African talent out yeah. of South Africa and, and, yeah. and really blow it up, bring, bring South Africa to the world. Yeah, that's, that, that, I'd, I'd love that. I seriously would. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's what we're kind of trying to work on. Got a few international PR uh, agencies that have been interested in some of the local bands. Which I guess kind of brings, uh, uh, as we start to wrap up this chat for tonight, I guess both of you guys have been around the block a couple of times. I mean, uh, uh, as we mentioned, Alec, you were part of literally Sacrifix in the mid-90s during, mm. during the pretty much the intense like crossover from, from like, you know, <laughs> to the ANC type of yeah. rule. You've seen a lot. And yeah. through the Witch Doctor uh, events, you guys kind of influenced a lot of the new up and coming bands. I mean, you hear a lot more different sub genres, I think, due to the fact that bands like Flesh God Apocalypse or Decapitated yeah. or even a Hate Breed uh, in, a, mm. in the certain extent because it, it helped push a little yeah. bit more that hardcore attitude. Both, uh, both of you guys, um, I'm interested on in your thoughts. Where do you think the SA metal scene is right now in 2020 compared to 1990 where there was literally groin churn, VOD, Sacrifix and, and like maybe Pothole, you know? Um, you know, I think that uh, it's not necessarily the, the, the bands that, that are a problem. Uh, and in fact, I don't think they, you know, we're not going to look at this as, as problems. I think what we're dealing with is a, a situation of, you know, do we have enough venues that are prepared to play metal music, metal, have metal bands? Are they going to pay metal bands? You know, oh, oh, is there enough promotion? Oh, is, is everybody going to get off their ass and, you know, stop thinking that Facebook is the be all and end all of advertising? You know, can we, can we do things differently and get more involved? Um, as fans, as friends, as bands to, to do that and, and you know, um, watch the, the other bands, you know. Um, you know, I hate to say it, we played a show last weekend and, you know, no, the, the bands don't stick around. You know, they don't watch uh, each other and, I, and I'm not going to say I'm not to blame. I'm part of the problem because, yeah, I'm 45 years old. I've got a, a child. I've got things to do, yeah. Um, yeah, there's just, uh, priorities that they take care of. but I, I reckon that uh, if if people in South Africa actually you know brought that camaraderie that I think we had back in the day um because I think that is what what we lacking at the moment is uh, that camaraderie if we brought some of that back it it would certainly alleviate a lot of the problems I mean the bands are fantastic you know I, I, I don't know of a, of, a, of a crap band you know, um, yeah, there may be some. I'm not saying there aren't, but I don't know any. I haven't seen them. Um, so, yeah, I think bring the camaraderie back, get people back into the venues and, and supporting the bands. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah Dr. D? Yeah, last yeah, thoughts. I, I, no, I have to agree with Alec. And the, in the 90s in Joburg, I mean, I don't know the Cape Town scene from when Alec was in there, but the Joburg scene... Um, I entered it at the tail end when 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 Agro and Metamorphosis and Sacrifice were like really big, and I mean, dude, I was I was 19 years old and I played in front of a thousand people and that wasn't strange back then, you know. And uh, if if you played a show with a hundred people, you'd be like, oh my god, nobody came to watch us tonight. Woe is us. Um, 
and and metal bands were buddies you know like alex said there, there was a, like a proper brotherhood and it wasn't like every band played the same scene we we had bands like jada jane who sounded like motley crew and we had urban assault that was a, like a very thrashy thing and there was that old school kind of death vibe going on back then and uh, that was cool you know and we all were just buddies and we drank jack daniels and and had a good time and i'm not sure what has happened since then but I, I think Netflix has a lot to do with it. <laughs> and yeah, the, the absence the absence of venues. Back then, we were talking about this the other night. In Cape Town and in Joburg, you could make a list of venues, bro. You could write it out. And you could choose which venues you want to play in. Now in Joburg, we've venues, maybe three. So, um, yeah, do you want Alex and if, if the fan battle one? Okay. Sick, guys. Thank you so much for being on this call with us. Uh, we're going to wrap it up there. We really had a, a great session with you guys. I think we got a lot of content out and it was really great to pick your guys' brains. And I think we should do it again. Yeah. Fun, you know, the future when you guys yeah. release your next album. Yeah. Yeah. Peace out. Can't wait to hear more, guys. Keep rocking, guys. We will see you guys next week. More brutal guests coming. Rocktober. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs>